All right, let's start in a shower. Who enjoys taking a shower at night? Right? After all the stress of school or work or relationships, a shower is always there. But I want you now to think about how privileged you are. Sorry to mess up your moment. But in your eight minutes of bliss under a shower, especially one of these nice rainmaker showers, you have managed to use double the amount of water the average African has access to. And the beauty of it all is you didn't have to work for that water. You barely thought about how that water got in your shower. I mean, it's a bad time to relax, not to think about all the world problems that need to be solved. But the reality is, the average African woman would have to walk between one hour and three hours just to, uh, to fetch the 65 liters you just use in your shower. Collectively, African women are wasting 200 million hours every day looking for water. Sorry, my mic. 200 million hours, to put it in perspective, that's almost half the time that the whole world, globally, Asia, Europe, America, spends on Facebook on a daily basis. Well, 156 million people still have to fetch water this way. Swampy, dirty looking water that contains all kinds of bad things, big and small animals. Like big animals like crocodiles, which have killed quite a few people. And small animals like E. coli bacteria, that kill more people in a day than 10 crocodiles will kill in a lifetime. Images like this, realities like this, the fact that 156 million people still have to access water this way, is why me and so many others decided to offer solution in the water sector to provide a clean water source away from the swampy water, away from the E. coli infested water, we drill boreholes and install hand pumps. We get a donor or we raise money, drill a borehole for a community, open it, get a nice picture, a favorite of volunteerists, and bam, we have saved the whole community. We can go home and rest. But this is like a fairy tale. This picture is really the ending. And I wish we stayed long enough to witness what happens afterwards. The fact that after the nice opening ceremony, the village population will have to line up for hours every day to access just the 10 liters or at a maximum 20 liters per minute that the hand pump is able to provide. I wish we stayed long enough to witness that communities grow, population grows but hand pumps don't. And on a global map, although this community looks like they have water, this is no real access. It is not convenient, it is not aspirational, and if you ask these people, do you think they would prefer this water over your nice water that comes through a shower head? What happens next is usually the borehole will get broken and be abandoned by a community a problem we call slippage. The community goes back to using dirty, swampy water where they started. The difference this time is we won't see them. They won't be visible on the global map. No donor will know this community needs water because they look covered. We have already given a solution. But a solution that I want you to know now is not permanent. But why doesn't the community pay to fix this water point? Well, it's a complex situation, but it's definitely not what you think. You see, all studies say that poor and marginalized people are most likely to have no access to clean water. But unlike what you're thinking, these poor and marginalized people are actually not too poor to pay for their water. Indeed, African rural communities pay more for their water than the urban rich. Let me give you a Kigali example. Have you ever heard anybody in Yarutarama or Kachiru paying 1,000 francs for a jerry can because their pipe has run dry for a month? But that's the reality in some other areas of Kigali, like Kanombe, Nyamirambo, and other places. 
While the more urban rich continue to enjoy very cheap piped water, the more peri-urban and rural communities are having to pay more and more and more for their water because service is expensive. For example, in the rural context, in Bugesera, in a, in a sector called Mogo, I'm very lucky to be working in right now, people used to spend 500 francs for a guy on a bicycle to go get them water in Yamata. And sometimes the swampy water also runs out. But the good news is those broken boreholes can receive new life. We can actually transform them into something that is aspirational and convenient. And that's exactly what we're doing with our service called Inuma. So Inuma transforms those broken hand pumps that grace the rural areas of Africa into a functional purified water mini grid that delivers water in the house so that instead of seeing the sight of kids carrying jerry cans, we can finally see them grabbing a glass in their houses and fetching water, drinking it without giving much thought about where it came from or the hours they're gonna have to spend to get it. So today I want to disrupt your thinking. A study by the UN showed that poor people, branded poor communities, are spending 10 to 20 times more on their water than the urban rich, as pointed out. So I want to disrupt your thinking to look at these poor rural communities as markets. Right now in sub-Saharan Africa alone, they represent 456 million people who need water to survive because water is a human right. Unfortunately, one we all don't get to enjoy. If you don't get water, you'll probably die within a few days. But let's see them for once as a market and not as beneficiaries and start asking them what they need. Because in my work, I've never had trouble convincing people to pay for water. They're happy to get a convenient service, one that saves time. Because in the new world we're in, time is the biggest commodity we have. It's the most costly to give away, and unfortunately, we're still losing so much of it, especially for rural African women. We sell the water at public kiosks, but also connect it at home so that they no longer even have to make a short walk because nobody should have to be working for water in the 21st century. But there is a business opportunity, and I don't stand before you today as an NGO. I'm actually an entrepreneur. And entrepreneurship, by my definition and by many books' definition, is answering a customer need and making money doing it. Communities that receive our water spend with us about $1 every month. Once they have water in their own homes, they go from spending that $1 a month to spending $5 to $10 each month buying our water, which pays back the cost of doing the new infrastructure within two or seven years in less populated areas. And most of our customers are women who now enjoy having that time back to spend with their families, to play with their kids, finally having free time to use for whatever they need. Make income, be closer to their families, whatever they choose. They have the time back. And I'm gonna end by sharing a small story from one of my favorite customers. I mean, the one I got to visit. Her name is Hadija, and she lives at uh, one of our service areas in Gwinhari. Hadija used to walk for water. She would wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning to beat the line at the pump finally get water, get her two jerry cans at home, have to wash, clean, do laundry, everything, to where if you stepped on her nicely cleaned floor, she would be so mad at you. So when I visited her, she was like, uh, I actually had really dirty boots on me, you know, it's the rain season. <laughs> so I, I was about to remove them, I didn't want to soil her floor. She's like, no, come in, I now have water at home, I'll just clean up after you. <laughs> to see the level of joy reestablished in her mind, where peace has come back, where she knows she has this free time. And as I finished visiting Hadija, she said, actually, you know, with all this free time, I'm kind of wondering, would you hire me as a brand ambassador so that I can encourage more people to get your point, water points? And I um, think we might just do that. Thank you. Thank you.